Welcome back to the Wizard Shop. It's time for another installment of North Star Head Studs. We're going to take a look at what it's like to put these on today. Let's get started. So a quick recap for you guys who haven't been following along on the North Star videos. This is my 2004 Cadillac XLR. It has an engine with some issues, some massive oil leaks, rear main seal, and different things going on. And rather than pull it out and have my car down for a long time, I got this engine from J&J &J Auto Wrecking in Marshallville, Ohio. Very big thanks to them for that. There will also a link in the description for them. And I got a head stud kit from Jake at North Star Performance. I have installed the studs for the heads and everything. I've got one cylinder head installed, torqued, and everything. We're going to show you guys the process on, this is actually would be the driver's side head. We're going to put that one on today and show you what is all involved with that. So once this engine is done, it'll be fully bulletproofed. All the seals will be taken care of. The oil leaks will be non-existent. Blown head gaskets will be non-existent. Then I will just swap the engine out with that one and keep the leaking one, which has stripped threads in the bottom end, for parts or for a later date in case something were to happen to this one, which I don't think it will, but it's nice to have extra parts on the XLRs because parts are getting harder and harder to find on them. Also, once I get the head on, we're going to flip this thing over here on the stand, pull the oil pan off, and discuss what's all involved with the main studs. Let's get this thing turned around so you guys can see it, and let's get started putting on this cylinder head. So as you can see, these head studs are installed in the previous North Star video. You actually saw me drill them and tap them, all the holes and things, well, at least some of them. I did get this side completely done, used Loctite and installed all the studs in the proper arrangement. You don't tor torque the studs or anything like that. You just finger tight down to the bottom, and they're ready to go. I've got the mating surfaces all cleaned up, so let's go ahead and get started on this. I know you guys like to see me do some wrenching, so that's what we're going to do today. So since we're doing head studs now, like I've mentioned before, we will no longer be worried about degrees and torque to yield and all those things. So here's the paperwork from North Star Performance. It clearly says no torque on the studs. Torque the nuts in three passes. Dry. Do not put oil on the threads. Dry. Use the torque sequence defined below. You start out with 30 foot-pounds, you go to 60 foot-pounds, and the final pass of 75. There's nothing about degrees there, which is really nice. I like that. It's the way all engines should be. And the torque sequence is just like a 1960s Chevy small block. You start in the center and work your way zigzag back and forth out. It's a very common torque sequence, so it's very simple. There's nothing complicated about this, but installing the studs can be very complicated. Let's go ahead and get the head gasket on here, and then we'll slide the head up over on top of the engine. As you can see, people worried about losing these really large studs that the head gasket or the head itself wouldn't even fit on. The portion that goes into the block with the, the large threads is large, but this is the same size as the holes that are originally in the head or the head gasket. We'll push them over the dowel pin here, the actual dowel, there we go, portion there. We're not going to spray anything on the head gasket. It clearly says on the packaging, do not put any kind of coating. It already has a special kind of a sealing adhesive or something already on there, so we don't need to spray anything on this. Everything's ready to go. I'll go get the cylinder head. All right, guys, here we go. Make sure we get the studs lined up here. Here's that one. There we go. It's kind of tough to wiggle it on there because the holes are just a, a bit smaller than the studs, but it does slide on fairly easy. And we have a nice seat all the way around. So if this was a stock engine with head studs, we would have put this head on and you would see 10 holes here. But now you see studs sticking out. That's a big difference. It comes with washers that you put on first. So we'll get that done. 
And then here's our 10 nuts. We're going to just get them started on the threads. So this is my little impact I'm going to use to run the nuts down. It's less than five foot pounds. It's not enough to do any uh, serious torquing. This is just to seat the nuts so I can get them ready to do the torquing. What? Torquing? No, not twerking. I don't do that, Mrs. Wizard. <laughs> So now I got my handy dandy snap on torque wrench set to 30 foot pounds. We're going to do the first pass on these head studs. And then I'm going to go through and double check that I got 30 foot pounds on everything, make sure I didn't miss anything. Now I'm going to bump up to 60 foot pounds as stated in the instructions. Here we go. Now I'll double check that they're all at 60. So now we're going to jump up to 75 foot pounds, which is a little harder to turn with this little bitty one. This is my snap-on tech wrench. It does, it does degrees and foot pounds and inch pounds and everything else. I won't be needing this one now. And the reason why we do it in steps like this is because you want it to seat flat throughout the entire torquing sequence. You can actually warp the head if you torque at 75 foot-pounds right away and just work your way in the wrong sequence or something. You could cause actually some damage, so that's why we're following this sequence. Here you go, Mrs. Wizard. Thank you, sir. This one lights up. Okay, I'll go through my double check all my work, make sure I'm at 75 on all of these, and then we're done with that part. So now those are all torqued up. You can see now we have nuts in place where there used to be head bolts. And I always like to double check everything, especially on something like this. You don't want to forget one of the nuts that you didn't torque it right or you skipped over one accidentally. I always like to double check my work on everything. I have put the cams in here just temporarily and spun them around. There's no contact or nothing wrong with the, the head nuts sticking up a little higher than the, the head bolts used to. They don't even get close so you don't have to worry about that. There are three bolts that go over here in the timing cover area. I'll get those on here in a minute. And then we're going to flip this thing over and start on the oil pan. I know this system works on the 2000 DeVille that I had. It had a blown head gasket. And after it was all said and done, it never had one again. We trusted it so much that we gave it to our oldest daughter at the time to drive. And she drove it and used it for quite a long time. Never overheated, never any trouble. So I know that it works. Let me go ahead and get these three bolts in and then we'll get this thing flipped over. To fully do the head studs and put the heads on, you can plan on an hour and a half or more per side. You definitely want to take your time. You don't want to get in a hurry. You spend all this money and investment to bulletproof your engine. You don't want to get in a hurry and in a rush and destroy it. If you've got an appointment to be to in 30 minutes, this is probably not the time to start on this. Give yourself a whole day just to take your time and take it easy and do this work. So, both heads are on, fully torqued that head stud upgrade is finished as far as the installation. I still have to reassemble the rest of the engine, obviously. But now we're going to move to the bottom end where the leaks usually happen and the main bolts usually break. Let's go ahead and get this thing flipped over. Uh, 
So there was a little bit of residual oil left in the engine block. They do drain them before they ship them, but there's always going to be a little bit of residual left over. It kind of made a mess. And we use these little pig mat, they're little mats that you can just throw these on the spill. It soaks them right up. They'll be in our Amazon affiliates link in the description below. It makes way less mess than putting kitty litter or the, that type of oil dry or something down. It just I don't like oil dry stuff all over my shop. We can throw these down. They're super absorbent. When they're done, you just toss them. So you definitely want to do this not in the car, obviously. This is so much easier on an engine stand. I can just flip it over and go to work. I got room. I can move. I can focus on doing a good job. Right now we're going to remove the lower oil pan and get that out of the way. And we're going to show you the oil manifold, some of the common leak points on these engines. So this harness that's on here is going to go in the trash, or I might keep it for spare connectors or spare pieces. I'm going to use the harness that's in there. It's going to be already fully installed, ready to go onto this engine. And yeah, go ahead and get this one out of the way. I don't want to sit there and fight with that all day. I can rewire it if I need it. So that's done. Now we're going to remove the oil pan. So you can see this has an oil pan gasket. These like to leak. It's metal with a, a orange kind of a silicone sealing compound. And that gets flat with age and it won't seal anymore and oil just seeps over the side and out the side of the engine. I'll go ahead and get this out of the way. So it looks like that now this is the, the block. It is not. Between the oil pan and the block, this is actually oil manifold. It's a very thin plate with some grooves and things in it that allow oil to flow through passages and go to different parts of the block. This is definitely a big leaker. You can have 30, 40 psi oil running through these channels, and if there's any compromised seals or gaskets, it'll come out the sides. You can see our main bolts. Here they are. Someone commented, I've done 20 of those, they never break. There's a reason why these main stud kits exist, because you go to take them apart and they just snap in half. If you ever have to do any work on these, they're, they're known to break. They're also known to strip the threads out in the block. So I'm going to break them loose by hand first, then I'll zip them out. I'm not just going to go with an impact and go to town end up tearing it up. I want to feel the threads as I loosen them up. There's a lot of 10 millimeter bolts that hold this oil manifold on as well as the main bolts. This is our oil pickup tube and it has its own little gasket as well. Set that aside. Now we're going to break loose these main bolts, and I want you guys to listen as I break them loose. You're going to hear some really crunchy stuff. So you can hear. These things are just begging to break on you or strip the block out. That's why I'm doing them by hand, not with an impact. This is about the time when you go to break them loose, they just snap in half. Now what do you do? But we're going to be converting it to the studs. We'll show you that here in a minute. Let me get these all loose for you guys. If you're taking these loose, make sure you keep eye where your knuckles are, because if it does snap and break, you could really cut yourself, so be careful. And before you zip them out there, I noticed that you were doing like a outside in when you loosen them. Is there any reason for that? Yeah, I kind of want to relieve the pressure as kind of like doing head cylinder head bolts or whatever. I don't want to just go 
or just pick random ones. So I worked my way towards the center, just like when we go to install these, we'll work from the center out. So now I've got these all loose, I can feel that the threads are clean, they're not binding. I'm going to go ahead and zip these bolts out of here. And then they're going to go in the trash. We'll not be using these again. You're, you're supposed to get new ones anyway, but there will be no bolts holding this together anymore. Now we're going to pull the bolts out. Next step is to pull a little windage tray out that keeps the oil from splashing or going, kind of keeps everything together that way. So windage tray, get that out of the way. And now it looks like this is our block. We're down to the block now. No, we're not. This is the oil manifold here. Now we're down to the block. You see all those orange little channels and a little gasket or seal that goes in there? Especially on this side, the driver's side, is where a lot of the oil leaks come out. You can see these channels, these are ports or oil runs from the oil pump, which is right here. It pumps them through, the, through these channels and up through the block. The bottom cover of these channels is actually this plate. It covers over those. And when the seal or the gasket goes bad, it pours out the side here and it looks like your oil pan's leaking and it has nothing to do with your oil pan. It's much deeper than that. One of the fix to take care of this leaking ever again is to redo this orange seal here, this little, it actually just pulls out and you can put a new one in. And then you go along the outside edge on both sides with the gray GM silicone that Jake from North Star Performance provided for this purpose. So if there is a small tiny leak it goes into the engine, not outside the engine. It's okay to have a small seep, it's just not going to hurt anything, but it is if it's going external to the engine and makes a mess. You're not really supposed to reuse these, but there's really no choice with these LH2 North Stars. Even Jake from North Star Performance said, I've sold the last one I had. There are no more. They don't make them anymore. Specifically for the XLR and the SRX. If you order these, you'll get them for the front wheel drive cars. This is specifically the rear wheel drive. Also the STS has these as well. If you call the dealer, they're discontinued. There's a lot of places online that say they have them and then they send you the wrong one, the front wheel drive one or they just say, we don't have them. Jake did assure me, he said, if there was a channel that I could get these, obviously I would have them, but there isn't. So, the only fix is to do this orange seal here, use the gray sealant, and that'll take care of that. So I'll move the oil manifold out of the way. And I'm going to do the, the lower case of the engine. This is, it looks like part of the oil pan, it's not, it's actually the lower case with the main bearings and everything. I'll do that off camera and get it done, because it takes quite a while. We're running out of time here. But I will put a few studs in to show you what they look like, and then I will go and reassemble this here later in the week. So here's a couple of our main studs, and they can thread in the place of where the bolts were. They just thread right in. You don't drill or tap or do anything like that. You just thread them in, like the normal bolt, until it's seated. Then you'll put your oil manifold back on, and your windage tray, and then you'll put nuts on, and torque those down to the right setting. No longer will we have main bolts, we will have main studs. Some people are concerned about having a line bore the engine because we've shifted it or changed the hole spacing or drilled the holes. We didn't change anything. The clamping force is going to be the same as if it just had the torque to yield bolt. It's not going to change enough to do anything. In fact, in the instructions, it doesn't say anything about needing to get it a line board. Being that we haven't altered the holes, we're just reusing them. You might think that you could just leave the oil manifold in place, just change out the main bolts to the studs and put it back together. But with such the high failure rate of this seal on the oil manifold, 
if you're this far in, it makes sense to reseal it. The fix even General Motors does is the gray silicone. Like I mentioned, you go around the edge. Also, we will reseal the case right here with the gray silicone. We will also add a little bit to the oil pan. Even though it has its own gasket, around the edge of the gasket, we'll do a little bit of the gray silicone. And that will give it at least 100,000 miles of no leaks. They almost last that long anyways, but this will definitely get it that much further along, if not more. I've heard a lot of people resealing these in this manner and it never leaks again. So that's definitely a thing you want to do. The last thing I'll do one, before we're done with this engine is the rear main seal. I won't be filming that, it's so quick. I'll just pop it out and pop the new one in. Start reassembly of the engine. Once I've got this engine fully reassembled, our next video will be doing the swap. So I definitely got my Whalen yutani shirt on today. I really love the Alien series of movies. I think they're amazing. You can actually watch the original one from 1979, and it's still good in 2022. Most of the old 80s movies I grew up are trash if you try to watch them now, but that one is still good even today. They really did a good job on those movies. I love those movies. So now you know when someone mentioned, I have a North Star and it's head studded and main studded. By watching these series of videos, you know exactly what that means and what they did to get it that way. This will take care of my leaks, take care of any of the main bolt problems. It'll solve my head gasket issues. This engine, when fully assembled, now will be bulletproofed. It'll also have new timing chains, guides, tensioners, everything brand new. Rear main seal. It'll be like a brand new engine. And as you can see, when we had it apart, it's very clean in there. Thanks again to J&J Auto Wrecking in Ohio for sending this, this engine. If you guys need any XLR parts, you definitely need to check them out. And if you're curious about purchasing this kit or having it done locally or whatever, make sure to check the North Star Performance webpage. All the different seals and options and things that you can do for your motor is amazing. You definitely want to check them out. So thanks again to Jake from North Star Performance and J&J &J for everything they've done. If you're curious what kind of tools, kind of like the pig mats we just used, check my Amazon affiliates link in the description below. We get a small cut and we really appreciate it. And make sure to hit the subscribe button because we're going to be changing this out. We've got some updates on the bus. There's all kinds of things going on in the shop. Thanks for watching.